Member of Parliament. Uh, I'm also Lord Mayor of this great city, Dublin. Dublin, as you may know, is the capital of Ireland. Uh, I was elected last June, and I will continue to be Lord Mayor till next June, please God. Uh, and I said the house, this house was built in the year 1716. Uh, the chain of office which I carry is a chain of office presented to the city by King William of England. At that time, Ireland was uh, governed by England. Uh, there had been a certain amount of botheration between uh, kings and those who were hoping to be king. But anyway, uh, King William, it was following the flight of the earls. That was the time when the Irish chieftains had to flee the country. He granted to this city this chain has been worn by every Lord Mayor of Dublin since the year 1698. So what you're looking at there, David, is a, a link with the past, going back to 1698. The office of Mayor of Dublin dates back to the year 1222. And we have in our archives the name of every Lord Mayor since that year. And uh, when you are as old as your father who is with you, and when I will no longer be on this earth, you will be able to say to your companions, I met one time when I was over in Ireland, the man Jim Tunney, who at that time was Lord Mayor of Dublin, and is one of a link dating back to the year 1222. It's uh, makes me, not so much myself, but the, the office. It's a reminder of how important the office is. I'm happy to know that yourself and your companions, your father, uh, that you're enjoying your stay here. I hope that your companions in college, what do you call it college, I was a headmaster here, uh, everything below university, we call it a school, sometimes. Generally speaking, we retain college for a, a third level. Uh, is there anything special now? Any further? Many messages you want me to take to your to your friends? I'm sure that they are all enlightened, intelligent young men like yourself, and perfect ambassadors for that great country, that great continent of yours. Your president. Ronald Reagan can be quite happy that he has, uh, in your generation, thousands, and, I suppose, hundreds of thousands of young men who, when the time comes, will be very qualified to carry out any office required. Even I have been president. Maybe, maybe in years to come, David, my grandchildren will be going to New York and meeting David, who might be mayor of New York. How about that? That would be a strange twist. Uh, stranger things have happened. They say, you know, there's a proverb in the Gaelic language which says, uh, it's often in the unexpected place the fisherman finds the lobster. It's often at the unexpected time, maybe, that somebody make a, can make a prediction which might turn out to be true. What made you get interested in politics? Well, I was invited. In 1965, the leader of the government, the then government, invited me to offer myself as a candidate. And this would be uh, for a general election. That was for election to parliament. So this would be maybe worth remembering by you and all your school colleagues uh, when I say that the Having accepted that invitation, I wasn't successful the first time. That was in 1965, but in the following general election in 1969, I was successful. I was elected Member of Parliament. I've been in Parliament since. I served as a, uh, a junior minister in the Department of Education. I was also minister for youth and sports and culture. And 
I've been deputy speaker of our House of Parliament, Doyle Eric. And you know, David, too, we have our own Gaelic language. And maybe to prove that, I would say to you and to, again, to your classmates, Dias Merigiv, a Wookali, Paul Sulagam, Gwilshiv, Gwilair, Kabai. Translated means. Uh, God and Mary to you, boys. I hope that you are all quite well. More importantly, I hope you will stay well and that you will continue to be successful at your studies, enjoy them, and that as a result you will be all engaged when you are in your 20s in worthwhile, satisfactory, and happy professions. Is it true that you don't have to be... Um born in Ireland to be an elected official? We have in Ireland, we have in Ireland, in our, in our House of Parliament, we have men, I think the Deputy Speaker of the House of Parliament at the moment was born in America, I think he came home here when he was quite young, but he was born in America. You're not thinking now of coming here and trying to <laughs> displace me, David, are you? No, sir, I'm not. <laughs> But once you give me some, I don't know whether uh, now you've given me a six mark question now whether you must first I think the American government have something to say I don't think there's two ways somebody who you could be living here and be an American citizen whether they're uh, happy about your pursuing political uh, matters here I'm not too sure but uh, I do know that uh, as I say our present speaker was born in America Dublin have uh, one of the best Gaelic football teams, and uh, I think that on every occasion which they won the All Ireland, they were able to boast, proclaim that at least one member of the team had been born in America. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You are very welcome, uh, young David. We've come now into the dining room. Again, you see that the dining room was intended for a mayor who would have a, a very large family. Uh, I have a family of four, so we can't uh, uh, occupy all the chairs that are here. But I suggest that for the purpose of this meeting, that I might invite your, your father to sit at the head of the table here for a moment. You could come along and do that, and you tell him at least that he's right. Trying to, uh, we don't have anything to put before him on the table, but uh, uh, I was invited now to come and see some of the uh, very valuable pieces of silver that we have joining us here. We come at uh, two of them come over here, David, yes. And, and how long have these been in? They are here, uh, certainly over a hundred years, uh, some of the some of the forks there. Were they a gift Silver. from someone or anything? Now, at the time, David, I think some of them would have been purchased. Some of them would have come in. Uh, would I invite your father over here to have a look at it? Maybe he'd see it. Uh, some of them came in uh, during the time of George IV. Uh, that's the king. Uh, he was given his name to uh, uh, architecture. And on a matter here in the city, we talk about Georgian buildings, Georgian, Georgian architecture. Henry IV, it was during, it was in anticipation of his coming to that a, a room outside the round room was built. And it's interesting to note that uh, even though they didn't have, at that time have any of the modern facilities of technology, they were able to build that massive room uh, inside two months. This was proof for the mother of Pearl Hale, yes. silver, and this is beautiful. Here is a knife, it's a fruit knife, silver, mother of pearl. David, you wouldn't be able to get a picture of this away? Or that? Dad, if you'll excuse me. I'm sorry. This laid out, you can get a shot of that down. Take of course all I can. the cutlery laid down there. Let me give you some of this. And, uh, uh, we wouldn't invite everybody to come here and here, David, only because we have a special regard for you and we know that uh, your interest is uh, in recording what you see. 
not in taking it that we invite you in. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> is it free cash? See, that, that is the, that is the end of our, some one American lady did ask me, why, yeah. uh, how come you don't have four cash? <laughs> <laughs> that is the, that is the uh, emblem, of emblem of Dublin. Yes. It probably originates, I think that may be over in Dublin Castle itself. Do you have any idea what the three castles stand for? I would say that they possibly, they were, I think it was the three castle gates. I would guarantee that. And nobody, nobody can. Right. Uh, the chair down here is interesting, but it's not. It's, uh, it's quite a young piece of, but we did in 1932 have a Eucharistic Congress in Ireland. And that is the, that is the chair on which a visiting cardinal came here to us, sat at the actual Congress, where the Congress took place up in the Athenian uh, Park, that's the same park where uh, the Pope uh, visited and celebrated Mass when he was, when he was here. Are you sure that the Russia is like it? Oh, yes. The American Embassy is up in that, well, the American, the, yes, the Red Park, the Ambassador Shh. Park there. Even there they were. And this is the fireplace. Thank you very much. Liz. You're very welcome. Now, whoever is the Lord Mayor of this city, Mark, uh, he is chairman of a fund, a fund which is directed towards providing fuel especially and uh, uh, food for people in the city who might be uh, in need of either commodity at Christmas time. Uh, I don't know, did you get a shot of the crib there? This is peculiar to uh, the city that every year that crib is directly. Why don't you take your shot now of your... Uh, I do take them, yeah. Take your... your there you go. David, uh, it's unfortunate now for me that your father inquired, but we're not going to... We, we didn't want to reject his generosity but you can be quite sure that when you're at home in your snug, comfortable apartments in New York, that apart from the happiness and satisfaction you'll have yourself, you'll have the attendant satisfaction that because of what your father did, that there will be homes in Ireland who will be warmer and happier and better fed because of his generosity. <laughs>